If you're looking for a way to get a cleaner sense of width and depth in your ambient mixes, this is the video for you. Hey, it's Marcus from Hollow Suite. Ambient music is all about width and depth. So if you're mixing your music using a standard stereo EQ, you're missing out on a whole dimension. In today's video, I'll show you how to use mid-side EQ to balance your ambient tracks more effectively. Before we get to the juicy stuff, you might want to check the links in the description where you'll find a heap of free resources to help you both produce and release ambient and experimental music. If you've completed your own mix or master and you're looking for some advice about getting it to the best it can be, perhaps you might want to check out my low cost feedback service. Here's what one happy customer had to say about it. Okay, on to the good bit. So what is mid-side EQ? Most music you'll listen to is in stereo. This consists of two channels, left and right. However, the actual listening experience is much more complex. The two channels are interacting and mixing in our heads so that they form a 3D image to us. This is why if you're listening on two speakers, you might be able to hear something that appears to be in between those speakers. This is what's called the phantom center. It's a wonderful trick played on us by our brains as they try and triangulate the signal between the left and right. And that's what makes ambient music so much fun to listen to on a big stereo system because it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. When we collapse the stereo signals together, we get a mono signal. This can also be called the sum signal as it's the sum or the addition of both of those channels together. It's also called a mid signal because this is everything that you'll hear in the middle of a stereo image in that phantom center. If you instead subtract one of the stereo tracks from the other one, you'll get what's called a difference signal, also known as the side signal because it's what you'll hear at the sides or edges of a stereo signal. So mid side EQ is when we isolate that mid or side channel and then EQ it separately. So why use mid side EQ? If you've watched any of my previous videos, you've probably heard me harping on about the main focus of mixing being to blend and balance tracks together. When we're using a standard stereo EQ, we're only doing it on one dimension because both the left and the right, the middle and the outside are all being treated equally. They're all being EQ'd at the same time. When we switch to mid side mode, suddenly we're able to EQ on a different dimension across the stereo image. More so in ambient than many other genres, we're often mixing a number of stereo instruments or effects. And so it's critical to be able to get instruments to fit across the width of the stereo field so that they don't crowd each other out. Mid side EQ allows us to do this more effectively than simply panning or using stereo manipulation tools. So let's see this in action. So for today's demonstration, I have chosen one of my more maximalist tracks. It's basically just a long loop. Uh, let's have a listen. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. I filled up like the whole EQ spectrum. It's really big. Um, it has two major components. The first part is this section I've called drones, which is just a series of single note drones that I've created using the Make Noise Strega, I think. And there's this other one called Other Stuff where I have added some sound effects. And then I've also made like a giant reverbed version of the whole track, um, including some extra parts and kind of re-recorded it in on itself. Um, so let's listen to the whole thing. And then we'll listen to the parts. We've got a couple of sound effects here. Including a few things happening in the few things happening in the top end and some reverb and everything all mixed into that one giant track there. So in this track, I really want to give the drones a little bit more prominence. They're not really popping out the way that I would like, and I want them to have a bit of separation. I want them to be heard a bit more clearly compared to the other tracks in this mix. Now, one way I could do this would be to take the drones and narrow them a little bit so that they sit in the center of the stereo image and then take this other stuff and then I could make it wider using the, you know, ozone imager or something similar. Uh, and that way there would be kind of more separation between them in the mix um, across that stereo image. But there are some potential issues with that. The first one would be that that other stuff is already quite wide because it includes a reverb and all these other things happening. I don't really want 
to try and make that wider. Um, the other issue is, is because everything's so packed in tightly together in this, all the way across that spectrum, I think that, for example, uh, trying to do things like panning or something like that to get things in a different spot, it's not really going to make much difference because there will always be frequencies that are interfering with each other between these two sets of tracks. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just EQ along that sum, that center dimension so that I emphasize the frequencies that I want in the drones to make them pop out more. And then I go over to that other stuff section and I remove those same frequencies or I bring them down so that they're less prominent. So that way we remove what's called masking. So masking is when you have two tracks that have similar frequency responses that are competing with each other. If we lower those frequencies in one track and raise them in the other, then you end up with more separation between those two tracks. So let's have a look at the drones part first. And I've added my favorite, the TDR Nova, because it has the ability to switch between a whole bunch of different ways uh, to EQ. Here I'm selecting the sum, which is that center track. So in, usually it comes in stereo. I've selected sum instead. So we're just going to be working on that center track. Let's have a quick listen to that in solo. And I'm just going to grab a bell and just kind of run it quickly across here. See if I can hear where those main frequencies are. And I think about 500 hertz is probably where that power is coming from. And if I go up a bit further, there's also some stuff happening at 2K to give it a bit more sizzle. So I'm just going to turn on these two curves so I've added already. And then let's just listen to it with it off. with it on. So not a huge difference. I'm just trying to emphasize it a little bit. So if we go back to the full mix now, I don't think we're going to hear a huge difference yet because there's still a lot of masking happening with that other track. Let's just see if it makes any difference to the full mix. So let's turn it off. Back on again. Maybe a little tiny bit, but the real magic's going to happen when we go over to this other stuff section, and then we're going to add an EQ to that, and then we're going to start removing those same frequencies. So if we go to, once again, we're clicking on sum, and then I have pre-prepared a curve here that pulls down at 500 hertz. Now, if you noticed here, I've it's like about 12 dB down, 12 decibels down. So this is way more than I'd probably do in a real world mixing situation. But I think it makes it a lot easier to hear what's happening. So if you're doing this, you don't need to do it as extreme as I am. This is basically just to make sure that you can hear the demonstration properly. So let's have a listen to it with it off first. And then on. So it's making quite a difference here. One more time. On. Off. On. So that kind of very mid sound is starting to sound very sucked out in the middle there. Now, obviously this sounds weird in solo, but when we add it together with those drones, they're going to fill in that area that we've just pulled out. So let's listen to everything together and see what it sounds like. Now, I've made a duplicate of this uh, with the same tracks with just no effects on them so we can listen back and forth to hear what difference it is making. So let's listen to it with it mid-side first. And then effects off. Back to mid-side. And effects off. So 
what's happening here is that those drones, because they've been given their own spot, because that those competing frequencies have been taken out of that center channel, suddenly they feel like they're really occupying their own space in the center of it. When we go to the FX off channel, you can hear a lot more kind of harshness and kind of crowding in that area. So the mid side version feels like it has more separation, like the, those, like things kind of have a place. Whereas where if we go to the no FX version, everything kind of feels a little bit more like it's kind of climbing over the top of each other to reach your ears. So let's just listen one more time. So mid side. And then effects off. Mid side. So obviously this is a preference thing. Some people might like that idea of everything kind of being smashed into each other, but I want to try and have some separation. So I feel like that mid side's doing a good job there. So you might be wondering what this would sound like if we used only a stereo EQ instead of mid side, would it make any difference? So I've copied over the same EQ decisions I made with the Nova into another version. But this time I've selected stereo instead of sum. So instead of just select, instead of just affecting that center track, those decisions are now affecting the whole track all the way across the stereo width. So let's listen to the difference between those two. So let's start with the mid side. And then stereo. Mid side. Stereo. So it may not at first sound like there's a huge difference, but if we go back and listen to it one more time, focus in on that kind of ambience and that kind of mid sound in the stereo version. What I hear is that in that mid side version, it feels a lot fuller, right? It doesn't, it, it feels a lot thinner in the stereo version because that 500 hertz, that kind of where the power of the ambience is, has been removed all the way across the stereo track. It's been removed from basically the whole track in the stereo version, but in the mid side version, it's been kept in those sides. So it's keeping that ambience. It's making things feel kind of bigger and fuller. So let's listen one more time. So mid side. Stereo. Side. Stereo. So hopefully you heard that. So this is why I really like mid side so much, because it allows you to keep those frequencies that make the track, that give the track its power. But if those frequencies are interfering with another instrument, it gives you an extra dimension to have some wiggle room to remove those frequencies without compromising the whole track. Now, it's also important to note that mid-side is not the answer to everything. It's just one of different ways that you can look at your track, but it's a, an extra dimension that you can think about when you're looking at your ambient track and thinking, how can I add more separation to this track? How can I add a bit more clarity? How can I make it feel less crowded while still keeping the essence of that track, while still keeping what makes that track so kind of lush feeling or so uh, kind of big feeling? Next time you're messing around with your EQ, try it in a few different ways. Try doing just the center or try and doing just the size to see what kind of different effects you can get. So if EQing the sides affects the width of a track, is this the same as using a stereo manipulation tool? Basically, yes. The width slider on Ozone Imager is just a mid-side balance slider. So reducing the width on the Imager is the same as reducing the sides on a track. The width slider on the free version of Ozone Imager is broadband, so it'll affect all frequencies equally. So it's likely that choosing to EQ the sides instead would give you a better result, as you only need to reduce the frequencies that are out of phase, rather than cutting everything out. You can use the correlometer in Imager to check your phase as you're working. Just remember that doing any boosting in the sides is effectively the same as pushing the width in the image up past 100%. So bear in mind that it might introduce phase issues. 
Well, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching as always. I love to see your questions in the comments. It really pushes me to improve the quality of my content. So please don't forget to give me a shout out if there's anything you'd like clarity on. If you haven't subscribed, please do it. You'll be supporting free high quality content on producing ambient music, which there isn't enough of on YouTube. Don't forget to check out the links in the description for my free resources. And while you're here, perhaps you'd like to check out my other videos on producing ambient music. Until next time, keep making music. Cheers.